Boom. I open up, I slash the throat. Welcome back to another episode of Scenic Fights, Fight Scenes Breakdown. I'm Logan Love. I'm Chad Vasquez. And today we are finally getting to a fight scene that has been requested repeatedly for us. Extraction with Chris Hemsworth, who plays Tyler Rake, and Indian actor Randeep Huda, who plays Seiju. All right, Chad, you ready for this? Let's do it. Let's do it. So this is coming from a huge chase that was just happening. Get that gun. Get that gun, Rake. You yep. get, nope. No gun for you. Boom. Charging. Seiju's so trying to press the attack. So here we have Rake doing some sort of control. It's not a good grip. Mm. And then Seiju, he was able to twist out and get to a number eight position and just do double force. But again, you know, I feel that he should have tried to extricate himself and then continue. So let's break that down for something different that Seiju could have done to attack Rake in that position. In this particular scene, Rake stops it with a thumb down. Now, Chad, hold on as hard as you can. Yep. All right, I believe so much in my ability to get out of this. I'm gonna do it in slow motion. Don't allow me out. Yep. So he's holding on, he's holding on. I'm out. Yeah. There's my number eight. Rake is done. And that would have happened in less than a second. Let's assume arguendo, however, that it works. Here we go again. We go, I get out, and then I attack with number eight. Stab. Once again, Rake stops me with an improper two-on-one. If you wanna see a proper two-on-one, see our award-winning video, The Hunted. I'm gonna get out slowly. I would eviscerate here and go for that, but because they're wearing body armor, here, armpit, here, slash, stab, fight is done. What would you do? to get out as a grappler. So here's my opinion on what Ray could have done to get out of the situation. So again, we're assuming there's a wall here. Rake is blocking the knife arm. Seiju is leaning his way towards Rake and Rake's pinned by a wall. So what's the strategy here? Turn the left arm into an overhook and applying downward pressure to the shoulder, which is referred to in wrestling as a wizard. Now, the right hand, I'm gonna turn Logan around so you can see what my right hand's doing. I would try to get in a wrist control as soon as possible, probably even an inside wrist control like so. Will that grip stay there long? No, so I have to act quickly. Do you notice that Seiju's weight is mostly on Rake's right side? Which means that I can step out and putting heavy shoulder pressure immediately. So if I was Rake here, putting pressure like so, and now using my left leg to step out and circle his opponent, right into the wall and repinning him. From there, if the roles change now, he could have the option of disengaging and getting out. That's something that I could see Ray doing for the situation. So in this, none of these moves make logical fight sense in the reality we live in. In Hollywood, yeah, but in this instance, no. So I'll try and punch the buyer. I, I don't know if he could feel that, if there is body armor. Well, okay. someone's feeling that. that. It's right in the face, yeah, there's no right. body armor there. So Seiju just took three heavy Thor quality punches right to the face. Chad, what's happening to these two guys right now? What's happening with Rake's hand and what's happening with Seiju's head? Like, should this continue at this point? Well, I, I'd imagine it seems like he's holding his form and right. connecting. If they landed clearly on the cheek or jaw, that should be a possible knockout or right. drop down. And also, it's tough to punch a face without any protection right. with a fist. So there is a high risk of breaking your hand, okay. right? So possibly he, there's definitely must be a fracture if there was a strong connection to the bone with three good solid hits like that. Now, when you say fracture, are you talking about a fracture for Rake or Seiju? Possibly both guys, but I was referring more to the Rake situation with really? his hand. But I mean, again, if they're landing clearly and they're very heavy hits, I wouldn't be surprised if there's probably a fracture within the jaw. Gotcha, all right. Rake suddenly has a weapon. That is really cool. Deployment of a weapon is huge. And, and there are many martial artists who, you know, they practice with pistols or rifles or with edged weapons or with blunt weapons, how to deploy the weapon quickly and efficiently. One of the jokes is of people that train in knife fighting, they're like, oh, so where do you keep your knife? Oh, I keep it in my trunk in my car. Well, you're here indoors, you know? So. No weapon is useful if you can't deploy it quickly and efficiently and effectively when you need it. This 
an amazing example. In fact, it looks like sleight of hand to me because one minute Rake does not have a weapon, bam, suddenly he has a weapon. For me, the best scene in this whole fight. Man, you know if Thor's tired, anyone's tired. <laughs> All right, so we have a straight edge against a Karambit. Oh, these guys are going for it. Going high, he's faking. Coming in, just wild shots. They're both really acting like they haven't had a lot of weapons training. People wanted us to do the scene because it's a weapons fight. But to be more accurate, it's a fight with weapons. What do I mean by that? They're fighting and they have weapons, but are they fighting with the weapon? And if you look at Rake, there's a lot of boxing happening. You're gonna see like a little parry by Rake, for example. Seiju does a stab and then just a little parry. That actually is very apropos. However, it's not knife work. What would make it more knife work would be, he comes in with a, a stab, I can step off to the side and note that as I do the push off with the weapon, because of the curvature of the blade, I'm pinning this against his body. I then control the elbow. And because this is a crown bit with a retention ring, Boom, I open up, I slash the throat. Notice I've taken the back at this point. I can take the back. That would have made more sense with the weapon. And that's what I mean by this is a fight with weapons rather than a weapons fight. Because there are knife centric things they could do that we're not seeing here. What's another option because he has a karambit? He comes in with a large loop, so I pass underneath. Again, the curvature of the karambit. I slash the belly, I come in, I take the back, and then I can either slash the throat this way or deploy, slash the throat that way. Either way, my job is to flank. When you're in violence, you do not want to be in the blender. And you'll note, each time these guys reset where they're in the blender, one of these two highly trained people, Break or Seiju, should have flanked. That didn't happen. Bam, tie up, boom, catch. So Rake just did a disarm. That is a really cool knife strip. And Chad, we actually saw this exact same weapon strip in Donnie Yen's kill zone. Yes. You know what? We're gonna briefly go through that one more time. Seiju is coming in with a number one, but there's a slip by Rake, and Rake comes in with his own number five stab, which is stopped by Seiju. Rake then opens up Seiju and then knees into the body, causing Seiju to step back. Now he does the same strip that we saw in Donnie Yen's kill zone, except with a knife instead of a baton. Note that it's a little bit more difficult, the weapon's smaller, but can still be done. He comes on the outside, and it looks like he's taking the puño part, which is the end part of the knife, and pulls it to the side, disarming Seiju, comes in with an inside kick, boom, a big left cross, bam, and then finishes with a T. And as Rake is about to make Seiju regret his life's choices, Rake gets hit by a car. You sure you want to do the car hit? Maybe next time. Yeah. All right. So that was the disarm, and that was this last scene from Extraction. I have to say that I had lots of high hopes for this particular scene. In fact, I really enjoyed the movie itself. I thought the movie was pretty good. But honestly, there was a lot to be desired. Was it a weapons fight? It was a fight with weapons. It looked like two boxers that happened to have a straight edged weapon and a karambit. I did like the disarm. That was excellent. And also, the karambit deployment was one of the coolest deployments I've ever seen because it was almost like magic. In one moment, no knife. In the next moment, knife. That was really cool. Unfortunately, those two moments were not good enough to redeem the entire scene. So I'm afraid I have to give this a C minus. Sorry, Thor.